This is this is this is. What's up, you guys? Welcome to a brand new episode of my podcast. I'm your host, Mike Herrera. Great to be here. Uh, episode number 378. That's right. Um, <laughs> so in case you had a bad day, I just want I want to make your day feel a little bit better. Maybe it won't help. Maybe it will. I'm going to try. So today I took the kids to the studio here and they get to play video games. They get to play on the drums if they want to. They get to really just kind of do whatever we want. You know, we played hide and go seek. And when I came over, I brought my backpack and I put this water bottle in my backpack full. And I put it in the back of my car and we were off we went. And then I left it in the back of my car and we did our whole thing. I took them back to the house when we were done and and then finally I came back here to actually, you know, start my work day. And I'm like, let me grab my water bottle. And so I pull it out. I'm like, it's very, very, very light. <laughs> if, you're, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see the water bottle and you can see me holding it. But uh, <laughs> it's very light. I'm like, oh, no. Oh, no. Like that meme, that video meme. Oh, no. And uh, sure enough all the water had leaked out of my bottle, my water bottle into my backpack. Luckily, nothing in that main compartment was electronic, um, but the way my backpack works, it's like these pockets, you know, and I've got my, my laptops in the back, you know, pouch area, and then I've got these hard drives, I've got uh, a few other things here and there, but a little bit of clothing was all wet, and so, I just laughed. I was just like, yeah, what can you do? What can you really do? So uh, I had a good time with that. Water my backpack. Right now it's currently, everything's completely out, out of it. I pulled everything out of it and it's drying. And I pulled my shorts that were in there. They're drying. And some workout clothes. But uh, so that was my morning. And I had a great morning, by the way. So <laughs> I didn't let that ruin it. Um, luckily really nothing got ruined. My laptop didn't get ruined. My hard drives didn't get ruined. I haven't plugged them in yet actually. So I don't really know, but they were a little moist, a little moist. So anyway, um, something that, um, just happened recently, Norm McDonald passed away and I was, I'm bumming about it for sure. I mean, he was a great comedian. His, uh, you know, he'd known a lot for Saturday, Saturday night live SNL. Um, but he, he was in so many funny movies, um, a lot of Adam Sandler movies, but, uh, one of my favorite things was when he did a Burt Reynolds impression on Saturday night live and, uh, just, he would just chew his gum, you know, and, uh, just, yeah, I'm Burt, Burt Reynolds, you know, a dude brewski. It's a funny name, dude brewski. So <laughs> that to me, I just always remember that. I always will. But, um. Yeah, I just wanted to say that. You know, it, it was funny, though. Not funny, but really weird, but interesting. And when he passed away, I was like, hey, you know, Norm MacDonald passed away to a buddy of mine. And my buddy's like, who? And uh, I'm like, Norm MacDonald, he's a comedian. He was, he's been in a lot of things. You, you would know him if you saw him. Look, look him up. And he looks him up on his phone. He's like, oh, yeah, I recognize that guy. And right then, I thought... You know, that's that's about as much as we can ask for, you know, when we go, when we pass away is is if somebody doesn't know who you are, but they look you up and they recognize you. And I, I recognize that guy or girl, depending on who it is. But I, it just hit me in a weird way and not in a sad way, in a in a kind of funny way, to be honest. And I think, um, you know, I think uh Memento more, the Stoics say, you know, which is, you know, remember your death. Remember that you can die today or any day. You know, you, it's it's always there. It's always possible. And I think that's, uh, it's, I don't say that to be morbid or to be melancholy. I say that to to be real. And, and you know, it's true. It, tr it, it is true. Live your life to the fullest. Do what you can. And, and, and um, 
live live as as the best version of yourself that you can and even if you're faking it a little bit fake it till you make it you know what i mean so <laughs> uh i just thought that that was an interesting thought uh when norm passed away norm you know we're on first name basis now no um but i never met norm mcdonald but a huge fan huge fan and just the fact that you know just some random person up here in bremerton washington that didn't really know who he was looks him up on on google or whatever and yep i recognize that guy you know like that's that's a solid that's solid if if you <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not saying that's worth anything but i think uh as a as somebody like norm is in show business he wanted to be remembered for his comedy he wanted to be remembered for you know making people laugh um and and I guess I, I think about myself. I want to be remembered for, for making people happy uh, in the music, you know, and, and not all songs are, are happy and uplifting. And some of them are very much on the melancholy side, dark. Is it melancholy or is it melancholy? When I was a kid, I always called it melancholy when I would read it. But I, I, th I think it's melancholy. Um, the Smashing Pumpkins really brought that word into the mainstream, I feel like with Melancholy and, and Infinite Sadness, their album title. Anyway, a little tangent there. But um, just, I, I guess it's important enough to say that remembering that it could happen anytime, and, and that goes for your loved ones too. You know, remember to call your parents, call your, uh, call your you know, significant other, you know, wh whoever that may be. If it's your wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, uh whatever you know um person you know um you can't really call a dog although there's apps for that these days <laughs> or a cat but you can you can uh some people put speakers in their house and they can call in and and like talk on the speaker and their, their dog ears perk up and anyway uh yeah, it, it could happen at any time. But, you know, the Stoics, I always remember that because Ryan Holiday, a friend of mine, he's an author and he, he's been on the podcast and he's just always talking about that. And, and uh, I think it's important. It's important to remember because you just never know. And, and somebody like Norm MacDonald has been, had, had been struggling with uh, fighting cancer for nine years. Nine years, right? Nine years. That's just insane to me that, that nobody really knew. And, and that's, a, that's a lesson for us all, I think. You know, people just down the street that we haven't talked to in a while could be going through really crazy things, you know. And, and social media isn't a, good, um, isn't a good gauge, really, of how people are doing because it's really easy to fake it. It's really easy to fake it on, on social media. And I'm guilty of that, too. I only post the fun moments and and at the same time I go back to it because it's like I I feel like my part of my job as a songwriter and as a as a guy that's in a band playing music as a performer my I want to it's not always to uplift people sometimes it's just to like to 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 grab people and, and to make them think about something so it's not always about just happy good good feelings all the time but but at the end of the day i really feel like the majority of of what i do for people is make people happy and i and, and i get that from all, a lot of these voicemails you know that you guys leave so uh we're gonna we're gonna listen to some voicemails and uh before we get to that i wanted to i wanted to read yuri's little story about move to bremerton because we just released, uh, last week I think it was, we released uh, Move to Bremerton on YouTube. So if you haven't already followed MXPX on our YouTube channel, please go and subscribe to the MXPX YouTube. Um, and mine, by the way. Mine's my career video, and I think MXPX is just MXPX. Uh, but you can find it pretty easily and subscribe to us. It really helps us out immensely. Of course, go to MXPX.com, see what we've been up to, check out our merch and all that. But, yeah. Uh, we release, uh, every Monday we release a new song on YouTube and the last one was, was, uh, moved to Bremerton. I don't know what it's going to be this week when, uh, when this podcast comes out, but it'll be something else, it'll be something good. Um, but yeah, so, so Yuri, um, wrote up a little blurb for us and 
it actually was like, I don't even remember that when I wrote it. So let me just read it and then I'll comment on it. Um, here's Yuri. Move to Bremerton. I vividly remember the first time Mike played Move to Bremerton for us. We were in Dothan, Alabama, waiting for the venue to open so we could load in our gear. He grabbed his acoustic guitar, sat down in the back of the trailer and said, Hey, check out this new song I wrote. We loved it from the first listen. It perfectly captured what we were feeling at that moment. He had figured out the formula for long distance love. Move to Bremerton. End quote. That's Yuri. Um, and I didn't remember that moment in Dothan, Alabama, but uh, I have like like a hazy, fuzzy memory of it now that he, you know, jogged my memory, but I still don't really really remember that moment. What I remember about Move to Bremerton was when I had the idea for the song. And that was, that's my story. <laughs> if I was to write up my story for, for our YouTube video, it would be, I might have even wrote something else. But, um, you know, uh, the uh, I got the idea after a late night Denny's you know, we, we would go out to Denny's all the time after shows because we weren't going to bars. We were young. I was I was 18 years old. Yuri was uh, probably by then just turned just turned 19. Was I 18 years? Yeah, I guess I was 18 at that point. Um, I'm just guessing at this point, but I, I think I was 18 going into our first tour. But it's possible I was 17 and Yuri was the only 18 year old. I, I could do the math, but I don't want to do it on. <laughs> <laughs> on the podcast um so anyway we're just you know we're leaving bremerton and we're in all these new cities and these new places with new people and we're homesick or partly homesick and then partly um partly homesick sorry let me jeez, trying to undo my my sweatshirt and it won't it will not <laughs> How unprofessional can I be? How unprofessional can I be? I'm just going to... I'll tell you the reason why I, I just realized. I forgot. This is this zipper is broken on this hoodie, but it's a really comfortable hoodie. So I just taped the bottom and forgot that I had this hoodie on. That this was the hoodie that was taped. Because I have a few of these, these hoodies, but this is the only one that's taped. And... Uh, Anyway, long story short, <laughs> that's why I couldn't take it off. So I'm trying to be, be stealthy and just not working. All right, here we go. Feeling good, feeling good. So let me, uh, let me get back to my story about Bremerton, <laughs> about move to Bremerton. So we would go to, you know, Denny's after shows because we weren't, we weren't old enough. Uh, to get into bars, and I don't know that we were even, we weren't drinking yet, you know, we were kids, so um, I just had the idea of, I just wish all these cool people that were at this show, or at, at this after show party at Denny's, I uh, wish these people were in Bremerton when we went to Denny's, you know, we'd go to Denny's in Bremerton, we'd go to Sherry's in Bremerton, um, and so, you know, the song became about telling people to move to Bremerton, move to our town, um, and I'm sure at the time people were just moving away, you know, we weren't the, we, we didn't move away. We were just out, out working, out doing, and we'd come back. But a lot of people were moving away to college, moving away for jobs and just to get away from it. Um, fast forward, you know, we played the song all over the world for so many years and, and you know, that's no longer the case. Now MXPX holds a key to the city the city of Bremerton, um, and that's our hometown, and it's where we've always repped MXPX from, even when we went to high school in Silverdale, Washington. You know, my address, uh, where I was born, not that being born somewhere matters, but I was born in the city of Bremerton. Uh, my first, the first place I lived was in the city of Bremerton. Um, the second place I lived was in the city of Bremerton. So, like, we moved around in Bremerton, and then the reason why I went to high school in Silverdale was because we were just right on the edge of Bremerton and Silverdale, the school districting. And so that's why I went to Silverdale school districts. But um, 
a little extra trivia there for you guys. Uh, but yeah, so <laughs> the key, the key to the city. Thank you, former mayor Carrie Bozeman. Um, awarded us the key to the city and it's an honor it doesn't actually get you into places but it kind of does because you can call people you can call businesses tell them who you are i don't usually tell them that we have the key to the city but it doesn't hurt and they'll let you into places usually for free um, they'll let you up on their rooftops to, to shoot videos we've done it for mxpx for years and right now my key is in my little basement studio at my house and it's down there displayed on the shelf. And uh, I don't go in there that often, but when I do, I see the key and I'm reminded all over again how great Bremerton is and how amazing this career has been too. You know, it's been, it's been and still going strong. And uh, Bremerton is better than ever. And I feel like MXPX is better than ever. So thank you guys for that. Uh, people that listen to this podcast are definitely some of the uh, some of the hardcore of the hardcore people in, in my life. So thanks for listening. Um, let's get to voicemails. What do you guys think? Voicemails? Let's go. I didn't listen to any of these. I just, I to be honest, again, I didn't book a guest this week. I've been so busy. Um, I've been... I've been writing a lot. I've been doing a lot of other things. Um, there's, you know, I don't want to get into it, but we've overhauling our whole studio right now. That's basically been taking up a lot of time is uh, the, the overhaul. And you can't see any of that right here, but it's all upstairs. Um, anyway, it's been a busy week, so I didn't book a guest. Um, I book myself for the most part, or at least I do right now. And if I don't get to it, there's no show. And so I decided, okay, let's see if there's any voicemails. And there's some voicemails. So let's see what we got. It's like, it's like checking... Um, it's like checking the, the trap, right? You set the bait, you hook it, whatever it is, you let you leave it, you come back to it. Speaking of which, about that rat trap, it's hooked up. I still have not caught nothing. It's empty, empty. Every day I look at it, it's been there for like four days. So it's either the rat's gone, which is great, or the rat is much too smart for me, which is probably more accurate <laughs> okay all right let's get to some voicemails and uh and i thank you thanks for calling in if you want to thank uh if you want to call in and uh leave a voicemail yourself please do it's eight or uh, it's area code 360-830-6660 okay that's 360-830-6660 Leave me a voicemail. Let me know what's up. Uh, we'll get to it. All right. All right. And let's hear some voicemails. Oh, you know what I got? <laughs> I got to unmute. Here we go. Hey, Mike. Uh, how's it going? My name's Ryan. I am a huge fan of your work. And I am calling because I run a, a Facebook group. And it's called Mental Health Awareness Through Music. And uh, it's been blowing up, and we've had a, um, a lot of good things happen. We've had uh, musicians come in. I've had some, uh, some artists that I've interviewed. Um, one of the Weezer guys uh, has been on there and stuff. So starting to get some traction and saw your post with the phone number. So I thought, call. Uh, feel free to give me a call back. Phone number 760 818 Again, that's 760-818-5660. Cool. Right, I just did that so I don't have to edit later. <laughs> All right, Ryan, thanks for calling in, man. Um, cool, cool. Um, I'll have to check out your Facebook group. Um, I'm probably in too many already that I never look at. People just, it's weird because with Facebook groups, sometimes, and I don't know how, because I haven't done this to someone else, but you, you know how you can invite somebody to a Facebook group? Well, you can also just add somebody into a Facebook group, or at least you used to be able to do that. And so like most of the Facebook groups that I'm part of, I did not join. I just somehow became part of this Facebook group. Um, and, I, and it might have been before I understood what Facebook groups were or something, and I clicked on a thing that I didn't know about, but I don't think so. <laughs> 
I think I can figure out Facebook. Um, so that being said, uh, Ryan, very cool. Uh, I'm not. Sh I guess you're. You didn't have a question. You were just kind of letting us all know. Uh, maybe we should check out your Facebook group. Mental awareness is always great. I think uh, I think that's something that, and I've talked about this on the podcast a lot. This podcast is my mental. It's part of my mental um, mental health exercise like positive mental health exercise like it's not the same as like doing talk therapy with an actual therapist but it's very similar because you get to talk out your ideas you get to talk out your feelings and um i think that's so beneficial and, and, it, and it may it may come in in other forms or subconscious forms of happiness or just not feeling as anxious but like i haven't felt really i haven't had very very big mood swings and not that I've had a lot in the past, but like, you know, there's days where I would go and just have a day where I just, something would happen and it would just throw me off the whole day. And to yesterday, you know, yesterday something happened. I don't want to talk about exactly what, but it was, you know, somebody couldn't do something that we had planned on doing. And then I was just like really bummed about it. And then I was just like, you know what? It's all, it's fine. Everything's you know, it's good. And, and, and I think in the past I would let that get to me all day, but, um, I, uh, these days I'll, I'll do something like recognize how I'm feeling and then I'll, I'll get into, I'll get into, uh, I'll get into something. It could be going to work out purge that energy. It could be just as simple, something as simple as going on a walk and we, I know this is very redundant for a lot of people because they know this. But um, another thing is just talk to another t friend, somebody else. Just get on the phone with them. Not about this, but like an unrelated thing. Take your mind off it. And is that pushing it, sweeping it under the rug? I don't think so. I think once you acknowledge that you're feeling that way, it's time to move on. And then whatever you do is just your way of moving on. And there's a lot of ways to do that. For me, picking up my guitar for a minute, coming up with a song idea and that's literally what I did yesterday is I'm gonna write a song and I wrote I didn't write a full song but I wrote uh two different parts of songs so you know that to me it was great it was like that's productive that's something I can work with I can take that and move forward with it and um and I think if we all have something like that in our lives and it could be as simple as you know, crocheting or doing the crosswords, you know, you can, you can have a feeling of accomplishment if you, if you, you know, do the crossword puzzle or something like that. Um, maybe it's Sudoku or I don't know what it is these days, right? It's probably constantly changing and there's apps for everything too. So anyway, um, let's get to the, let's get to what's next. Hey Mike, this is Patrick in Des Moines, Iowa. Big fan for a long time. And uh, once upon a time, I dated a girl who was obsessed with the song Move to Bremerton, which is fine. You know, I, I like it. It's a good song. Maybe not my favorite on the album. But uh, eventually we broke up. And then I saw, you know, 15 years later, this movie called Kamiko the Treasure Hunter, where this Japanese girl is obsessed with the movie Fargo and goes on an adventure to find the treasure that Steve Buscemi buried on the side of the road in the movie. And it made me think about this old girl and how much she loved your song, Move to Bremerton. I wonder if anybody ever followed your advice, <laughs> if you call it that, or whatever, and uh, drop out of school, run away, quit your job, you got a place to stay. Has anyone ever just shown up being a super Move to Bremerton fan? Uh, yeah, that's my main question. And also, um, it came from Bremerton, the documentary. Why don't you make one of those for every album? Love you guys. Talk to you later. Bye. Patrick, thanks for calling in. Thanks for the message. That's pretty funny. Um, okay. I'll get to It Came From Bremerton last. Um, let's go to your first question. I don't think anybody's ever literally shown up on our doorstep. I followed the song. I quit my job. I, I dropped out of school and I ran away. And now I need to sleep on your couch. <laughs> Luckily, that's never happened, um, but there has been a lot of people that have, you know, waited outside the bar, that have uh, waited outside the show around here, waited 
luckily nobody's come to my personal house they have come to the studio i do not recommend it um but now and again it happens um you know it's just it's like a, a it's really weird to see people in bremerton <laughs> randomly like fans although if somebody sees me on the street or whatever and they want to say hi i i don't mind that like i see people on the ferry i see people in the airports on the streets, even in Seattle. So Bremerton, Seattle, all over. Whatever city I'm in, there's there's plenty of times where people will, will say hi. And that's great. So I don't mean that at all. I just mean like if I'm if I'm just kind of like literally just lost in my day, going about my day, doing my thing, it's sometimes really it's like, whoa, it's star it's startling to to have people just show up. So yeah, luckily nobody's just shown up and said, Hey, I need a place to stay. I always say that's Tom's couch. It's available, and um, we will feed you Silver City beer, and um, good luck. But yeah, people, lots of people have moved to Bremerton over the years. Um, whether or not they do it because of the song, I don't know. Uh, that's, I don't know. That's a good question. But um, a lot of people moving to Bremerton these days. Let's get to the next one. Oh, wait. I did not answer the question about it came from Bremerton, which is why don't you guys do the, one of those for every album? Um, great question. It's very, very expensive, very expensive to to make documentaries. And if you want it to be good, it takes so much time. So it's not only expensive, but it takes a lot of effort, a lot of time, a lot of work. And it's not just the filmmakers that got to put in. It's, it's the people that are in the film as well. And, you know, we don't do anything... We don't do anything completely, we usually don't do anything completely with that uh, autonomous from us. Like, we don't just like, all right, go ahead and make make this thing. I just heard, by the way, there's an HBO uh, documentary on Alanis Morissette called Jagged. And she agreed to sit down and do interviews and did all these interviews. And then she saw the first cut and was like, this is nothing like you guys told me it was going to be about like you guys completely flipped the script on, script on me and I feel betrayed by the fi filmmakers I was like whoa um, there's just no way we would ever do something like that I think I think for the most part we would we would always be very hands-on in the edit and, and have rights to the final edit and all that that kind of thing even if somebody else was kind of doing it behind closed doors we'd have final say and that's just maybe just because you know, we're, we're used to doing things DIY, and so it makes sense to us to do that. But these things can happen, right? So anyway, um, we eventually will do another documentary, I'm sure. You know, we're always, we're always documenting, thing, documenting things. Um, but, you know, it takes a lot of living to... I say this a lot about songs, you know, I need to go out and live in order to write, in order to write songs. I need to, like, have experiences, whether that's reading a book or leaving them, you know, in the flesh, but, um, it's important. And I think the same goes for documentaries is you got to build up footage. Things have to happen and, and things have happened, you know? Um, but yeah, it, we're, we're overdue for a documentary, but at the same time, I think, um, I think if we did one, every album, it wouldn't be a special, it wouldn't be a special. Maybe that's it. That's the answer. Final answer. Wouldn't be a special. All right. Next voicemail. Mike, what is happening, buddy? This is Brett from the band Focus. And uh, if you remember, we're in the first two bands on Tooth and Nail. I played guitar. And my question was, uh, what was your favorite memory from some of the early shows we did? Like uh, Cornerstone, 94, 95, Tom Fest, and that era. And, uh, you know, what were your favorite takeaways from that period, knowing that we kind of uh, pioneered straight edge, hardcore punk, you know, all that kind of good stuff. And my number is eight. Uh, I won't. I won't put his number up there. Eight hundred two nine zero. <laughs> Sorry. All right, that's it, dude. Thanks for calling in, Brett. Um, focused, man. They they were they were on tooth and nail when we signed to tooth and nail. So they were. They were literally, I think, the second band to sign to Tooth & Nail Records. And they had a great record. It was called Bowed. I think it was called Bow. Bow, B-O-W. 
uh, really great record. And we, when we, what I remember is, is our first tour, 1995, two days after we graduated high school, uh, we left for our first tour. And, and one day after we graduated, like literally the next day after we graduated, we shot the video for want ad. I've told, we've told this story many times. This is in, in some of these documentaries actually. Um, but the, uh, the thing that sticks out in my brain is just going down to California. Two days later, we shot punk rock show and we stayed at the singer's house, the singer of focus, Tim Mann. So Brett's buddy, uh, we stayed at his house or at his apartment. It wasn't a house. And that's where Yuri wakes up screaming came from. We we're in LBC sleeping on the floor and Yuri's just screaming Muppets and bloody murder and all this craziness. And, uh, so there's so many memories leading up to, to those shows. And we played a show, uh, we went, we actually didn't play a show. We, we went and saw Focused play a show the night before our show. So it was probably like at the day of shooting Punk Rock Show, the video, like that night we went out and, and saw them play. And it was like a tiny little place, like a tiny, tiny little place. And it was packed, of course. Uh, but that was really fun. And then uh, he's, he's asking about Tom Fest, Cornerstone. I mean... Man, those were the heydays for bands, bands like Focused, and and uh, there was uh, there was this other band that sounded like Helmet. I can't remember the name of them. Man, I'm so sorry. Uh, definitely not around anymore. But um, they were the first band to get signed to Tooth and Nail. Let me just look this up. Um, this isn't going to come up. It's going to be like what? <laughs> um, first band on Tooth. And nail records. Let's see. Let's see if it comes up. Wish for Eden. Yes, that's that's the band. Wish for Eden. <laughs> they, they were heavy, 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 and they sounded like helmet, kind of like doing it, like they they did drop detuning. So like, it was kind of clear that that uh, uh, the, in those days Brandon Evil was um, he was trying to find like. You know, hard. He was trying to find bands he liked. He liked hardcore. He liked punk. You know, he liked alternative. He liked grunge. So I think he was just okay. I like them, and they're like kind of like Helmet. Cool. I like that. You know, um, and MXPX was like, okay, I need a punk band. They're a punk band. Let's get those guys. Another thing is we were so young, starting out. You know, but. Um, all those guys in Focus were a little, maybe not all of them, but they were a little older than us, at least by a few years. And so we always kind of looked up to them. They were taller than us. <laughs> so uh, it, it was, uh, they were always like big brothers, right? In the, that first year of touring, them and Blenderhead, Blenderhead was another, you know, we we did our first tour with Blenderhead and, and it was their tour. Although we kind of co-headlined because we were kind of coming up pretty we were kind of coming up pretty hard. A good a good uh, analogy is in 1994, Tom and I went and saw, Thomas Nesky and I went and saw Bad Religion at the Moore Theater in Seattle, Washington. And it was a great tour. It was them and then Green Day opened. And I, I think there might've been one band, op like the op there might've been an opener as well, but, but Green Day was the, the main support. and. I of course was a, I, I was a fan of Green Day. I'd knew, known about them, but I didn't. I had no idea how good live they were. And so they, when they went on stage, they blew Bad Religion off the stage because they were such an energetic live band. This is before Dookie came out, so we just had their uh, nine nine thousand Slappy Hours record or whatever it was. And then we in Longview as well. Um, Longview? No, not Longview. Uh, whatever the. <laughs> I don't know the name of the records. Uh, Ker Plunk, that's it. Ker Plunk. So yeah, those two records were the were the two records that we had had, and and so a lot of people were seeing them for the first time, but they just blew away Bad Religion, and Bad Religion still sounded great, played great, nothing wrong with them, amazing, but just a different stage show. At one point, you know, I remember Greg Graffin when we toured with them. Uh, if the lights went down and he was tired. He would sit down on on the drum riser. He would sit down and be singing, and then when the lights came back up, he'd stand up. So, 
<laughs> we're like, what? Really? Come on, man. And this is like 15 years ago that he was doing this. So uh, anyway, I love Bad Religion. They sounded amazing. Eddie Vedder walked through the crowd and got up on stage and, and just jumped on stage with them and was singing like Suffer or one, whatever. I don't know which song it was, but I, I thought that was pretty cool too. <laughs> <laughs> so all in all, it was a great show. And, and so back to the parallel, I feel like MXPX, even though it wasn't our tour, we were kind of co-headlining if that, was, that wasn't even really a thing back in those days. But we were so coming up so strong that it was, was kind of like that. Like we were just really blowing people away. And uh, man, those early days were fun. And, and Focused was probably still is one of my favorite hardcore bands. I haven't listened to their music in a long time. I'll have to check it out again. But um, I wonder if it holds up. I wonder. I mean, to be honest, it holds up as good as my first album, Poking At You. You know, that's, that's some people love that album. And, and I don't hate that album. It's just, it's rough around the edges. It's rough. I mean, there's there's a lot of editing that could, could have been done. Um, just straight up, okay, we don't need this part again. You've played that three times. It doesn't need to be played four times, things like that. So, uh, yeah, but Cornerstone and, and Tom Fest, those were, those were always fun festivals. Um, we had our ups and downs with those two, you know, always controversial. Just, you know, what I, what I kind of realized was if you're just yourself, um, sometimes that can be controversial. <laughs> See, if you don't go along with what everybody says at all times, whoa, you're very rebellious. But um, I think I think we got a rep of being rebellious for ridiculous reasons back in those days. But um, but hey, it's only helped us out over the years. Right. What you know what they say about press. There's no such thing as bad press. All press is good press. Uh, let's get to the next. Let's get to the next one. We still have not received a response to the final notice that has been mailed to your <laughs> residence. Warranties are time sensitive. They must be extended before your vehicle reaches a certain mileage. All right, Karen. How, how did they get my number? What? <laughs> what? That's what I get for not listening. Uh, let's try this one. Oh, Mike. Uh, <laughs> Corey M. here. Uh, just watching... Tumble down video from back you know, a decade ago at the Highway 99 Blues Club, and just remembered uh, remember back way when uh, um, now we weren't really hanging out, obviously, but uh, I, I had planned on doing some recording at Monkey Trench and was around for a little bit there and uh, down in the Seattle area. And uh, that that show in 2011 at the 99 Blues Club got drummed on by <laughs> oh, I can't even remember your drummer's name from uh, uh, Tumble Down, but oh man, Harley, that was a great project. I really wish I would saw more Tumble Down, and uh, you know, heck, love what you do, brother. Um, just send good good vibes your way, uh, and also let me know I'm still alive after the BMW crash and all the nonsense that happened and everything else. Uh, <laughs> I, I still can't help but think <laughs> that uh, <laughs> what you call it? Oh, what song was that? Um, I'm still here. <laughs> Had had something to do with me in some way. Anyway, take care. Care call back two zero six four three four. You can leave that part out of the podcast. Yeah. Bye, bro. Bye. <laughs> Corey, man, thanks for calling in and thanks for jogging my memory. I think I'm still here could be said about a lot of people's lives these days. Who knows? I mean, it's been it's been a lot of years, but tumble down really got me through uh, some some crazy years that I think if I wasn't doing Tumble Down, I would have gone crazy because MXPX had slowed down to like 
one show a year for a couple of years, right when Tom and Yuri were kind of transitioning into their new jobs and I wasn't sure what to do. And I was doing the MXPX All-Stars a bit, but, um, but really tumble down was, I was like, okay, I have time to do this. And, and so I put, I put everything I had into tumble down and, and all my energy and, and highway 99 was, uh, a lot of fun. We had so much fun playing all over the place. We played, um, we never got to the East Coast, but we played Chicago, we played Texas, and, and we never got really further east than Texas and Chicago and that, you know, up and down from there. But um, but all over the West and the Midwest, we played so many great places and so, to so many people and met so many people. It was, it was truly what I love about being in a band. Part of what I love about being in a band is is building a band and building building those those uh, friendships and having those memories and and having those experiences and and we had some harrowing experiences as well it sounds like you did with your bmw crash i'm so, I'm so glad you're still here brother so glad uh great to hear from you uh tumble down a lot of people are going to ask like when are you going to do something new with tumble down and so i might as well might as well answer that you know it's been it's been on my mind here and there that someday we could do something again but i think what what makes the most sense is is um is doing mxpx as much as i can while we're on fire and we are on fire i mean it's been it's been an insane five years five plus years of uh you know really uh, before the self-titled album in 2018 we were playing shows and selling them out and doing really well and and, and through the self-titled album to now it's just been even better with shows and then of course with COVID and all that we haven't been playing shows but we've been doing other things we've been doing the live stream huge success doing between this world and the next which um, if you haven't heard about that you can check out our YouTube again we do excerpts from it um, but we do full sh shows on the internet um, and people buy tickets and watch and it's a different media it's a different medium and it's a different way to watch music and to see it but uh it's a cool thing and it's and it's really it's really kept us from going crazy and i think you know going back to like the beginning of the podcast when i was talking about mental health and and things that i do just working and playing shows things you working on something you love and if it's even if, if you don't love your job maybe there's something within your job you can figure out to do even if it's like a hobby um I just feel like learning new things is cool. Um, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's not fun to learn new things. But a perfect example is this Final Cut Pro program. I used to use Adobe to edit all my videos. And I just, I didn't have the new Adobe. And I didn't, I don't like, <laughs> I don't like to subscribe to things when I'm not constantly using them. Like I'll go months without doing a video or without, you know, editing a video on my laptop. I'll just do it on my phone. But so I'm like, I don't want to pay all that money for not using it. And so I switched over to Final Cut Pro. It's like, you know, you pay the fee, you're done, and you have the thing. That makes sense to me. And so the problem was I didn't know how to use the program. It's like, so I started watching all these, these uh, tutorials on YouTube. I called Jake Long. Hey, Jake, how do I do this? You know, but uh, for the most part, now I, I make all my videos on Final Cut Pro. I don't think about, if I don't know how to do something, it's not a big deal. I just google it or real quick or whatever and 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 for the most part i remember how to do the things that i have to know how to do for for the videos i do for like the podcast here and and, and things for mxpx and all that so there you go uh, it made me feel better about myself i'm improving as a person self-worth is up um and I, th I know that a lot of people struggle with self-worth. You know, you don't feel like you're good enough, you're pretty enough, you're smart enough. And I feel like that's me every day in some ways. It's all of us every day in some ways. And so just do a little bit of things. Give yourself a break. Um, forgive yourself and just move on, move forward. That's it. Um, I think that's a great place to, I guess we can do one more. Let's do one more. Hey, Mike. Uh, Eric Fisher here, the uh, exceedingly tall guy that stopped by and shared the a couple months ago uh, with my son. And I talked to you about the Forever Forward experience, the the, uh, the sustainable chain of kindness project that I was working on, and uh, I asked about sending you a card in the future. 
and uh, I'm getting close to launching the program itself. Um, but the, the one thing I'm running into a, a difficult time with is, is the funding part of it. And I'm not asking for money, so don't, don't, don't be put off right away. But I am getting ready to start a crowdfunding campaign here shortly uh, to raise the funds to be able to start the sustainable chain of kindness project um, and get it launching so I can actually start making an impact in the world and improving people's lives and things like that. So um, what I was wondering is, if you are willing to, or if you are, um, you know, if you have any ideas, uh, anything that you might, because I know you guys did some crowdfunding in the past uh, to launch your last album, which was amazing, by the way. So, if you guys have any suggestions about how you were able to make it successful, uh, I would absolutely love any feedback you can give me. You can check me out at Forever Forward Experience on YouTube, uh, but I usually hit Instagram. That's usually where I do most of my stuff. Forever Forward Experience on Instagram, uh, but you can contact me back at this number uh, as well. I would love to hear from you. I've been a huge fan back since the days when you used to play at the uh, Silverdale Community Center. So <laughs> I've seen you grow and uh, always been a fan, and I just uh, have a lot of respect for what you guys do. So um, thanks for listening to me ramble. I appreciate it, and hopefully I hear back from you. Thanks. All right. Well, uh, consider this hearing back from me. Thanks for uh, – it's cool. Uh, the it's a cool idea. I think, you know, what you want to know is, can I help you spread the word on the podcast? Yes, I'm going to do that right now. And um, I guess if you call back in when it's ready to go and let me know, I will play your message for the people, let them know that they can go crowdfund it and, and do your thing. And, and I guess that's probably going to be the extent of my interaction with it, uh, just being honest. But to answer the rest of your question, which was what 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 do you do? How do you how do you have a successful crowdfunding campaign? That's a great question, and it, and it really depends. And I think let me boil it down to this. I think one, there's a lot of things you got to do. You know, there's a checklist, blah 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 blah. But I think reverse engineer it for yourself. What's successful to you? And you got to go with okay. You're you're trying to raise a certain amount of money because things cost money. Now, if you don't, let me just, aside from the money and all that, let me get back to, I think one of the most important things when it comes to crowdfunding is, or any company, any company branding, anything you're doing. If you want people to pay attention, you want people to care, you want people to go, oh, this, this is something I want to check out. You must have a story. So number one, have a story. And if you don't have a story, get a story <laughs> to get a story. So, so your story to me is we met outside, we talked, you know, you met my son. I'm a huge fan of your band. Like that got me in the door. But like for most people, you don't have that. So you need to have a story. Like you need to talk about what you're doing and your personal experience with why it matters, why people need to fund this project. So for MXPX, it's like we told our story, what we've been up to. We almost went bankrupt. We, um, you know, <laughs> making our last record. And uh, we, but we put everything we had into it and, you know, all, all this stuff. And then, and then here we are, we made this record. And one, it was, you know, we started with, we, we led with a song called Let's Ride. Let's Ride was so I mean, it really was the crux of the whole record. I mean, the record isn't the record without Let's Ride for us. So I think you need you need your lead single, which is for you could just be your main story. What's your main story? Does it have to be have to do with you and your family, you and your son, you know, things like that, you know, and if you know, take it away from what your company is into it to a broader sense. It could be a skateboard company or a, like whatever it is. Like I started a skateboard company because I'm passionate about skateboarding. It's something that I do with my kids, blah, 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 or whatever it is. Right. So like that's, that's my main advice on how to be successful as a Kickstarter. Everything else, I think you can, I mean, you can get this from, from the internet as well. Uh, everything I tell you, you can get from the internet, but, but I think story and being consistent um it's got to be true it's got to be true truly you and people can latch on to that and then they're willing to part with their money and give you whatever it is but i mean give them something in return and if there's nothing to get then it has to be good feelings it has to be like a feeling of i'm helping there's a reason to help there's a reason to do this and so yeah 
I, I wish you the best of luck and um, I appreciate you. And hey, thanks for the call. If you, uh, if anybody wants to call in any of this kind of stuff, why not? Let's talk about it. 360-830-6660. It's a, a USA number from the United States. So if you're outside and, I don't know, you're on a pay phone, you're probably going to have to pay for it. But um, you can get away with somehow like an internet call, I think. Uh, <laughs> and let me know what's up. All right, that's it for me this week. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning into the podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, your voicemails are always enlightening. Thanks for your stories. Thanks for your questions and your comments. And uh, if you want to follow us online, please subscribe to the YouTube. You can watch this show on YouTube on the Mike Herrera video YouTube channel. Also go check out the MXPX YouTube channel while you're at it. We talked about a lot of that this week. And mxpx.com is the place to support us and the socials. Follow mxpxpx on Instagram, mxpx on Twitter, and Mike Herrera uh, podcast on Instagram, Mike Herrera pod on Twitter. Real quick before we go, shout out to my producer, editor, all things. He's an encourager, Bob McKnight. Um, he's out on the East Coast, so our schedules don't always line up. We don't talk that much, but um, we're going to make it happen. I'm going to show him how I edit all these videos, and then maybe he'll be a video editor as well. He's done a few things for me, actually. He's, he's done all right. You know what I really need? I need, like, a guest booker. That's what I need because I'm just – I got friends. I'll be like, here, call this person. I think they want to do it, but I just don't – I just don't – Ah. Bob, all right, you guys, peace. <laughs>